Hello and welcome to another Procreate tutorial where today I'm going to show you how you can make this volcano design. As always there's links to everything you're going to need for today's design in the requirements section of the description down below. As always make sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe for weekly Procreate tutorials and if you want even more tutorials from me come and support me over on Patreon where I post three more exclusive tutorials every single month exclusive to my Patreon supporters. The catalogue sits at over 80 at the time of recording so there's no better time to join as you get access to every single one of them when you do join. Again, there'll be links in the description down below if you want to come and support me over there. And with all that said, enjoy the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and let's get started. So once you've created your canvas, the first thing we're going to want to go ahead and do is just set a guide. I do this quite typically, but if we go to our actions, we're going to go to the canvas tab. We're going to turn on the drawing guide here and we're going to edit that drawing guide. Now, if you've used the same dimensions as me, should I say, we can set this grid to the option of 500. And then if we hit done on the grid size, we'll get a four by four. If you've changed your screen size, you may just need to adjust that accordingly. So divide your canvas size by four, of course. And this just helps us sort of lay out our design in the same fashion. So each area sort of sits within the grid system. So take a look at where I've used the lines and where I position things to make sure they match up in accordance with my grid. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our layers and we've got an empty one to get started with, but we will go to our background color and we'll grab the color in the bottom right of the palette. We're then gonna go ahead and hit done. We'll come back to that later on. And then on this empty layer we've got here, we're gonna go ahead and go to our colors, grab this color here, top of the second column. Your brush wants to be set to probably something like calligraphy and the monoline brush. You can pick whichever one you want. We've just got to create a large shape. Now the only thing I am going to make sure I do is if I go to my brush studio for the one line brush, if I go to my stabilization, I'm just going to make sure that that's brought down quite a bit so I can get some lovely nice jitters in here and it will just help give the uh, volcano a little bit more sort of uh, texture on the sides there. So I've reduced that down so every little small jitter I do with my hand is going to be present. So the mono line brush, the size, we want to kind of make that a little bit smaller, probably around about 30%. And what we're gonna go ahead and do, our finishing point, I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a line here. It's just gonna be above that line there. We're gonna swoop up from the sides to create this. So we're gonna start down here and we're gonna go ahead and just create a lovely sort of bumpy, lumpy sort of shape, keeping it nice and bumpy all the way up. And we'll do the same on the opposite side. So we'll start over here. We'll go ahead and just bring that all the way through, creating a lovely rocky surface. And then at the top here, we'll just create the very top of our volcano. So as long as you've gone edge to edge, you can drag and drop your color in like so. We're then gonna go ahead and make sure we're happy with that, and I am, so I'm gonna carry on. We're gonna go to our layers, we're gonna create a layer that sits in front of this. So we're gonna create a new layer, go to our colors, we're gonna grab this color here, the top of that fifth column, this one here, and we're gonna create two large, sort of spiky shapes on the edges here. So they're gonna be pieces of land right in front of us down here. So I've gone across there, I can drag and drop the color in. And if I zoom in for you and I actually go ahead and invert that for you so you can see that, that's the shape that I'm going for. And then on the same layer, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on the opposite side. I'm gonna sort of vary up this shape a tiny bit more. So it'll kind of make this one a little bit flatter almost, but it goes off to a similar height and I'll drag and drop the color in. We're then gonna to go to our layers again, create another new layer, drag it underneath our volcano. And while we're here, we'll also create another new layer. Now this one here, just underneath our volcano, we're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab the next color down in that fifth column. And we're gonna create some sort of hilly shapes just in behind our volcano. So roughly over here, we'll just create some really lovely sort of wobbly lines and then just carry on your line all the way across. You can make them completely different on either side, one higher than the other. But as long as you go edge to edge, you can drag and drop the color in. We then go to our layers and go to the one underneath once more. Go to our colors and grab the bottom color in that fifth column and get the final pieces of land in the distance. Now these could be sort of very peaky, very mountain-like shapes back there. We'll let that sort of droop down in behind our main volcano here and then move that off to the right. Again, you wanna try and vary up your sort of shapes here so they're not too similar to one another. But as long as we've got this, we're good to go. And potentially we could even grab that and move that a tiny bit higher for a little bit of extra distance. Now we're gonna start at the back. We're gonna make our way forward with all of the details. So we're gonna create a new layer and drag it underneath all of our four pieces of land. 
we're just going to go ahead and add an additional color to the background so if we go to our colors and grab this color here the middle color in that far right column your brush wants to be set to the option of airbrushing and the soft brush and your size wants to probably be somewhat fairly large around about sort of 50 percent and towards the right side you're just going to create a bit of a gradient and a bit of a glow off to the right hand side there that's all we need to do just a little bit of color and just blend that into the background Next, let's go ahead and look at the next layer, and that is this set of hills here. So we're going to go ahead and create a new layer in front and swipe from left to right on both and group them together. Feel free to rename your groups if you wish. But on this new layer here, I'm going to go ahead and go to my colors. I'm going to grab this color here, top of the first column. Soft airbrush again, probably around about sort of 14, 15%, and just go left to right between the two sets of hills and just separate them from one another with a tiny bit of sort of glow really simple little bit of glow but we want things that are way in the distance to look like they're in the distance so we're going to make sure we go down to the actual layer itself for those hills we're going to go to our adjustments we're going to go to the option of gaussian blur and we're going to swipe from left to right blurring them out now you can go up to something up to around about eight nine possibly ten percent if you really want to blur them out and they're just going to be background content so I'm going to do exactly that. I'll go up to 10, we'll go to our layers. And I just want to make sure that this layer that we made to separate the two, if we tap on it and we clip it to the shape, we're good to go. Now you can, if you want to, pinch these two together, save yourself a layer, but ultimately we're going to move forward to the next set of hills here. We're going to go ahead and create a new layer in front. Swipe from left to right on both and group them together again. Again, feel free to rename that if you like. Tap on this layer. Clipping mask it to it and do exactly the same steps. We're just going to add in a nice little light glow down here in between our little hills there. And just like before, we'll go back to the layer, go to our adjustments and go to Gaussian Blur. Now, of course, things as they get closer to us will be less blurred. So we don't want to go any higher than the last blurring that we did. So I think we could probably slot it pretty much in the middle around about sort of five, maybe six, maybe even seven percent just as long as you don't go higher than what you did before. So I'm gonna go up to 6% now and I'm gonna tap on my adjustments when I'm done. I'm then gonna go ahead and go to my layers. Again, you can pinch those two together if you like to save yourself a layer or you can collapse the group down. Let's then move into the very top layer before we carry on with our main focal point. So we've got these two hills here on either side on the right and left. We're gonna again create a new layer in front, tap on it and clipping mask it to it. And we're going to swipe from left to right on both and group them together. Now this one, we're not going to go ahead and use the blur. We're going to go ahead and add some details because it's quite close to us. We do, although we're going to blur it as well, we do want to add some details to it. So we're going to make sure on this empty layer, we go to our brushes. We're going to go to the option of painting and we're going to use the option of turpentine. The brush size, we've got it about 8% so far. You may want to make that a little bit bigger, potentially up to the 15 mark here. And because our light source is going to come from up here, and it's going to come across and hit the rocks, you just want to kind of just scrape down the rock edges, creating really, really light streaks of paint and just touching the very edge of the rock. Again, this is going to be blurred shortly anyway, so do not spend too much sort of precious time over it. I'm being very, very gentle with my brush and pressing as light as I can. And just seeing where the paint wants to land and if i like it i'll keep it if i don't i'll just undo it and carry on again and maybe the odd little scrape back here and you can always run your pen at like a different angle but ultimately that's all you need to do it's a very similar technique to the waterfall tutorial that i did on youtube recently where we use the turpentine to do exactly this so we're just gonna scrape up and down here add some details you can leave some gaps in between as well. So for example, I can go up to that edge there and then maybe just jump straight to this top edge here and add some color onto there. Just a little something like this. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna merge those two layers together. We'll pinch them together. We'll go to our adjustments. We'll go to Gaussian Blur and we'll swipe from left to right. And that detail there gets completely lost, but you can still tell it's like a rocky surface. And I recommend we either match to this one or do just ever so slightly less. So I think we went up to about six percent on that one so we're going to go six percent we're going to go to our layers we're going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it and we're going to change the top one from normal we're going to go to the option of color dodge which is just going to punch out those colors a little bit that's really optional and it also depends on how much color you've added so if you've added quite a lot just bring your percentage down to somewhere that you're happy 
I'm pretty happy with around about 40% because we've got these bright spots here. Next, let's go ahead and work on our main focal point. So we can collapse that group down for all the other layers. Again, you can merge all of those together if you like, because we're pretty much done with them. But our volcano, we're going to create a new layer in front, swipe from left to right on both and group them together, of course. Let's add some texture to the volcano first. So with this empty layer and the same color, we're going to go to our brush and we're going to make sure we're in painting again, but we're going to use this one here, the stucco brush. We're going to make sure it's maxed out on size there on the left hand side and we're going to go up and down in a vertical fashion and cover the screen. Some areas you can leave a little bit lighter with your pressure. You don't have to fill in every single bit, but a little something like this as long as you filled the screen. Then grab your cursor. We're going to go ahead and distort it. So we're going to grab distort, bring that top node down so it matches the height of our volcano. And at the minute that would look a little bit flat. So we're going to bring in the top right node and point it inwards. We're going to bring in the top left node and bring that inwards. And likewise, you can then point these corners out as well if you need to, just to sort of cover your mountain or your volcano, should I say, in texture. Now, feel free at any point to then switch to maybe the warp tool. And maybe you want to sort of wrap the details a little bit more on the sides so I can sort of squeeze this right column out of the three. I can keep squeezing them together, squeezing them together somewhat making sure they're nice and straight still, but just bring in all of it together so that you can just kind of let those sort of rocky-ish textures just wrap around your little landscape area here. Now, once you're happy with it and it does a pretty good job, you can then go to your layer, tap on it and clipping mask it to the volcano itself. Now you've got this sort of upward trajectory of all the rock. Now this texture is just one that I like just to fill in the sort of space. You're more than welcome to use anything else that you like the look of. Now what we're going to do is on that same layer, we're going to tap on it and we're going to alpha lock it. So we can only paint on that texture where it is. If we go to our colors, we're going to grab this color here, the top of that fifth column. So it's the darkest out of all the tones. Your brush wants to be set back to something like airbrushing and the soft brush. And with a sort of 15% brush size, we're going to darken up the left hand side and just paint over the top of it. You'll get rid of it almost completely. And you just want to kind of create like a bit of a transition all the way around. So kind of like a blend between the dark tone and this texture. Then what we can do is we can go back to our colors at the top there of the first column. And then we can just on the very edge over here, just bring in a little bit. Now, try not to worry about this stage too much. Simply being, we're going to end up losing quite a lot of this underneath the lava anyway. So once you've got a little bit of coverage like this, we can then go back once more to the dark tone at the top of that fifth column. Change your brush into the option of painting. And again, the same brush as we were using before the stucco. Probably reduce the size down there to about sort of 20%. And you can just carve your way through some of these areas here. So start at the bottom. You can kind of carve your way through some of these areas here, creating little areas of just random darkness. You've got to keep it really, really light. And again, try not to stress too much because you're not going to see too much of this shortly. I'm just trying to break up what texture there was there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to this layer, we're going to tap on it and we're going to add a mask to it. And making sure you're on the mask, your color is set to black at the bottom here, double tap at the bottom of the disc so you can jump straight to a perfect black. Your brush wants to be set to the option of airbrushing and the soft brush. And probably, what size is that? It's about the 15, 16 as it was before, probably a little bit larger. I'm just going to blend this out at the bottom. So we're kind of erasing from the bottom here, blending upwards and just getting rid of some of the color. The next step is to then go to our layers. We'll create another new layer in this group. We'll go ahead and we will go to our colors, grab the top color in the first column. Make sure your brush is still set to the soft airbrush, which it is. And just like before, we'll make it around about sort of 20, 25%, just at the bottom here, just go left to right, creating a bit of a atmospheric glow at the bottom. A little something like that. Nothing too crazy, just something nice and light. So now we really are focused on the center point up here of our volcano. Let's go ahead and go to our layers. We're going to create a new layer and we're going to move it down. Now we're going to have to put it underneath our volcano. So you don't want to do anything like that. You just want to make sure that that new layer is in this group. It can be a little bit tricky sometimes. So that, for example, is not because it's in line with this column. If I move it up and try to just move it again, it may not. So you may have to sort of put it in here and then move these two layers above until you end up getting it nice. I've not yet worked out a trick or the best way to do that. 
So they're all in the group and I'll just clip this back to it. Now on this empty layer here, that's underneath our volcano, we're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna to start to introduce some of these brighter tones. Now this will all come together. We're just sort of laying down some foundations at the minute. So we're gonna grab the yellow, our soft airbrush still, probably a small size, maybe around about sort of eight, if not smaller, maybe 5%. And we're gonna just start to sort of very lightly just push up and blend in a bit of a glow, a bit of a glow. And it doesn't matter if some points are a little bit higher than others. It really, really does not matter. As long as, I'll go even bigger, about 6% now, we create a little bit of a glow coming out of the top here. Nothing too large, but just a little something like this. Then we'll also go to our colors and grab the red just above it. So the middle of that first column, which you set back down to about three or four. And then in a random patch, I'm just gonna to start to sort of paint in a little bit of sort of red tones instead, just little random patches. These are kind of sort of background colors that we'll build on top of shortly. So just a little bit of red on the end. I'm super light, I'm kind of creating that kind of fiery look, but blending the two colors together, keeping my pressure super, super gentle. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create another new layer. And we're gonna go ahead and move our glow that we just created above that empty layer. So now that sits at the back. We're then gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab the top color in the fourth column. Same brush still, we're gonna go ahead and create this smoke cloud. Now we don't need to go all the way to these corners just yet. I kind of wanna just draw in like a bit of a sort of V shape like this, almost. You don't need to go to the corners yet, we'll deal with them shortly. So around about sort of a 8% brush size to start with so I can be nice and tight to the top of the volcano. I'm gonna just sort of create a large wobbly, 12% now, wobbly big area of darkness coming out from the top. You can make it nice and patchy, but you can ultimately just sort of let it be nice and wobbly and curly on the ends there. So it's just clouds spewing out. So I've done like a little odd little bubble here and let that just make its way up and outwards. And then making sure at the top, we're just nice and solid and through the middle. So we've got a big cloud area here, but it obviously at the minute doesn't technically look like so much cloud. So let's go to our layers and create another new layer. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab this color here, the middle color in the fourth column. Just like I've done in previous tutorials, we're gonna to go to our brushes. We're gonna go into the option of textures and we're gonna use the Dove Lake brush. Feel free to just use the clouds brush if you prefer, but I really like this because I'm in full control. Now, we're gonna make the brush size sort of fluctuate a little bit. I've got a 6% there and that's arguably a little bit too big, but what we're gonna do is as the clouds get slightly larger, they're gonna be less of them. And as they get smaller towards sort of the base here, we're gonna to try to sort of pack them in a little bit. So we're gonna look for some of the shapes that I've created here. I'm just gonna create like a little bit of a curve here, really light with my pressure to start with. You wanna build up your clouds. And then I've got a big sort of bubble here that sort of rolls out, big curve. A little bit of color on there. We'll move over to this side where I can see there's like a little bit of curve up here as well. As that rolls out of the way. Got another one just over here. And then in between here, you kind of wanna sort of make your, make your own world. So. I'll create like another sort of wobble bit of color here and then like another one over here. And these ones here, later on, they're gonna get faded out a little bit. So don't stress over these ones quite so much. I'm then gonna reduce the brush size down to a 3% and I'm just gonna continue now to just make my way down here, creating like curve after curve after curve as the clouds now are gonna to start to sort of really sort of be flowing out of here at a rate of knots. So you wanna kind of curve and curve and you don't wanna sort of pack them in too tightly though. You don't wanna have sort of like bouncy lines like that. You just wanna just dash in little curves. Where the brush drops it, that's where it should stay. You know, don't force it. See what the brush wants to do. Create these lovely little sort of flicks. And you can also go back up to your larger ones, for example, and maybe boost out sort of the bottom edge where it's pointing down towards our light source of, of course, the volcano. So I'm just creating some larger ones here. Maybe a large one there, like a large area here with a little bit more of a brighter tone. And that actually is a good sort of starting point because we're gonna smudge these out. We're gonna really expand on them. I'm gonna curve out some of these edges a bit more. Curve that round a bit more. Curve that one too. And that's actually looking pretty good. I'll color underneath here. I'll maybe sort of find a one or two that I can just increase a tiny bit. And you don't want them to be too bright. So I'm gonna go back in and just undo that one. 
and that's looking pretty good to me. Now what we can do is we can go to our smudge tool. We can tap on our smudge tool and as always, I'm gonna to go to airbrushing and the medium brush for this one. I always set my opacity a little bit lower, about 64, 65%, and the size at the minute is about 3%. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into some of these clouds just like I would normally do with clouds. I'm gonna smudge sort of sideways in like a curved fashion. And because we've used the Dove Lake, you can occasionally sort of leave the detail on the end of the cloud. So you can pick and choose where you wanna sort of leave the detail and where you wanna smudge the details. So you can make it nice and fuzzy, you can make it nice and sort of detailed here. It's just my favorite set of brushes uh, to use for clouds. Again, by all means, if you've sort of watched this part of the process and then thinking, well, what I would prefer to do is use the clouds brush, please feel free to do so. Just both work fine. Just try to sort of match up to sort of what I've done here in terms of the scale. Now you can see I'm sort of curving them a little bit and I'm smudging them out on the ends. I'm then smudging the back end of some of the cloud and then pushing it outwards, creating lovely little curves, leaving little areas here like there. So they're like nice and crispy clouds. And then little small bits that I've left just very on their own, kind of very small areas, they can just get a little bit of a smudge in and just blend it back in. Pushing these around. So this may take a, just a couple of seconds or two, a couple of minutes, just to sort of blend all these. You can smudge on the end, as I mentioned, if you want. It's just creating this big smoky cloud and you can really push some quite aggressively into sort of the next one as well. You can really force them to connect and blend them together. Really fade some out as well. Push, creating all these little little curves because they just, with the volcano sort of really forcing them up and out, they layer on top of each other fairly quickly. And that's kind of what I'm trying to replicate here. I'm trying to create lots and lots of sort of layers of it, just boom, 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 making its way up all the way up to the top. And then curve these ones out. And as I always do in my tutorials, I don't tend to skip ahead in any steps. You'll do it with me in real time. So feel free to mute me while I just make my way through these. And then I'm just gonna do exactly the same on the opposite side. I'm just constantly looking for where's something I can leave a little bit crispy. Sometimes it's just literally just me leaving something, just knowing I need to leave something a little bit crispy. And then by random choice, it works out quite well. Here, I'm gonna curve this one a little bit upwards. Here, I'm just gonna smudge that one up as well a little bit more. You can just literally push them upwards in certain areas. Gonna keep pushing these up into that space. Somewhat trying to see if I can connect a few together. They're on the, the same elevation. Again, you can see some areas have been left a little bit crispy, some are nice and smudged, some just very different to one another. You can push that one up and round. Some will be a little bit brighter, some will be a little bit darker. That's no problem. And that looks as if we're almost there. We can just push out a few more on the edges over here. I feel, I'm taking a look at that. That's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. We've got, again, some crispy ones in there and some not. Now, don't worry too much because we are gonna add some extra highlights and colors onto here. So don't try and stress over this step quite so much. Now we're gonna go to our layer. We're gonna go ahead and create another one and we're gonna drag it underneath those clouds that we just made. So we're gonna drag it underneath there we're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab again this color here, the top of the fourth column. We're gonna to go to our brush this time and we are gonna go into the option of elements and clouds. The opacity is set to about 83% and the size for a moment is set to about 15. We are gonna go ahead and just continue on the shape of this up into the top left and right and use the clouds brush this time just to sort of fill in these areas because they're not areas of great detail, they're just sort of really showing how the smoke is then making its way up and into the atmosphere. I didn't necessarily wanna add this level of detail up here. Then what we're gonna go ahead and do is on the same layer, we're gonna go to our colors, but we're gonna grab a darker color this time. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab this color here, the top of the fifth column. And probably with a slightly smaller brush, I was around about six, if not in that gap, if I can, I've got it around about 11%. In these areas here, I'm gonna randomly just drag in a few clouds with the darker tone, just to vary up the darkness and vary up those lovely purple tones as well. 
So just the odd occasional very dark cloud is fine. So I've really just randomly just scattering that through the cloud. You can do a little bit more of the darker tones towards the top edges if you like, just to sort of, again, break down that solid purple. We're then gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna to go to the white clouds that we created and we're gonna create a new layer and clip it to it. So tap on it and clipping mask it to the clouds. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna to start to sort of dabble with a few of these. We're gonna to go to the red here. And in the middle of that first column, we're gonna to go to our brush and go back to the option of airbrushing and the soft brush. And then we're gonna be super, super random. We're just gonna sort of randomly dash in a little bit of red. I'm keeping it really light with my pressure, but I'm just, you can just see an ever so slight change in the color there. So I'm just randomly gonna sort of dash in a bit of red, colorize some of the clouds with this little bit of red. A little patch there, here and there look, look great. And then switch it to the yellow as well. So switch it to the bottom of that first column and then get in there and just blend that in. You can go over the top of some of your reds if you like. You can make some of them nice and yellow. You can keep some of them nice and white. What I would do is I would focus a lot more of the color towards the bottom and leave these top ones a little bit sort of, uh, a little bit more of the white tone. So where all that light's coming in from the volcano, it's coming up and hitting the smoke up here. Then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go to our colors. We're gonna go ahead and grab the middle color in that, uh, sorry, the top color in that fourth column. Brush, let's make it a little bit bigger, about 15% and just sort of in the middle, go around in a circular motion and fade out some of these clouds up here. So I'm just taking away a few of them. They're there, but they're very subtle and I want them to be, I want them to be nice and sort of broken down a bit more, not too sort of perfect. So I'm just breaking down with odd little sort of dashes of color on that. Then we're gonna go ahead and start to use the sort of main cheese for this design, the sort of main focus. We're gonna go to our layer and create another one. We're gonna to go to our colors and grab the red in the middle of that first column again. But we're gonna go into our brush. We're gonna go down into the option of elements and we're gonna use this flames brush. This is gonna be the one that causes all the this, this sort of lava. And the brush size at the minute is set to 4%, which is very, very small. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna sort of take a look at the bottom edge. And in fact, the 4% is too small. Let's go up to the 20% marker here. And we're gonna take a look and we're gonna try to coat the bottom ed edge of some of these clouds. So I'm being really, really gentle at the minute because the harder you press with this brush, if I go really lightly, like so, you get a really soft little red line. If I start to press a little bit firmer, you can then start to see the luminance of this line get brighter and brighter. And we wanna avoid this right now. We wanna build up to this, but we don't wanna do that straight away. So we wanna take a look at some of the undersides of some of these clouds. So basically where your white edges are, Nothing too high, nothing too sort of up here. But if you do get a little bit higher, just make sure they're tiny, small dashes of color. So I'm just coating the bottom edge here, coating the bottom edge. This brush also has like an orientation setting to it so that the angle that you sort of start to draw inwards is the sort of how the head of the brush will start to rotate. So again, we're gonna keep looking. So at the bottom, some of these are gonna start to be a little bit sort of brighter and you can just scribble your pen along the cloud. That you just scribble it along, it's gonna be really evident that this is gonna be nice and bright shortly once we get that lava sort of flowing out the top. I'm just gonna squiggle my pen along these edges, brightening up some of them. Don't do all of them. You, you don't wanna make sure that like, you know, the odd one is still sort of shadowed if it's just because it's sort of close to the volcano. It doesn't necessarily mean it's getting any of that light necessarily, so it could be hidden. And again, you can make your way up here where you can add in like tiny little specks, just tiny, tiny little specks of red, potentially just on the edges of some of them up here. So like very, very subtle line work along those edges. And then once you've got sort of a light coverage, feel free to then start to look at it and go, right, okay, let's get in here now and really start to burn it out a bit more. So you can see that the, the yellows are starting to sort of make their way into that glow. I can see there that a few of these are starting to brighten up. Keep them nice and sort of wobbly, but also at the same time, bizarrely kind of smooth at the same time. You know, you wanna follow the curvature of your, your nice fluffy clouds that you've created. You know, just starting to see a few of these brighten up. And again, then you start to see that change between these ones and the top ones. These ones are nice and yellow now. They're getting a lot more bright light and we can vary up then the changes. And then you can occasionally go back up and just add in like a yellow spot on like that one there, for example. 
maybe even like one over here that's getting a bit more yellow just because it's high doesn't necessarily always mean it's completely out of the picture but you know you want to sort of be gentle with it be quite sparing at the same time so let's add some more here you can really coat some of these clouds so little sort of scuffs and little flicks just to sort of maybe show like a you know where the curves of the cloud are sticking out they're catching the light so i'm really just going to focus a little bit of time i'll probably stop in a second anyway because we can always come back to this at the end and in your spare time afterwards after the tutorial you know you can get back in here to your heart's content and really brighten some of these up but i'm really happy with how that looks now we're going to go ahead and move on so this is where we add the lava itself to the actual volcano so we're going to go ahead and above the volcano and above the glow that we gave it there at the bottom we're going to go ahead and create a new layer so it's the highest layer in this group for the volcano now your brush can fluctuate in size you can start off at the sort of 45 percent here and create some nice big areas of lava now just like before of course the harder you press you're going to get up straight up to white and yellow we don't want to get there just yet you want to sort of bring your pen and let that sort of run down and create the channels of the lava making their way down the volcano some are going to be like nice and sort of diagonal and you can just let them really run across your design run into other areas and you can see i'm slowly building the color up i do not want to sort of get to those whites and yellows immediately and i think it's quite fun as well to also just sort of start and make your way down the volcano before we then start to send the uh, lava up and out the very top so i'm just going to create some little channels and little sort of little avenues almost for the lava to sort of run down and i'm primarily going to sort of brighten up the left side more so than the right and you can see now i'm really starting to starting to build that up a bit more i'm gonna get in there start to chuck some more color maybe um, trying to rotate the pen to an angle that i really like you can see the head of the pen does sort of rotate a little bit you can really start to flush this out we're slowly getting up towards those yellows feel free to drop drop it down to maybe sort of 20 percent if you want to create those really lovely small avenues of color and like wiggles and wobbles of like the lava and some little areas in here that are going to be nice and yellow and some areas that are going to be you know probably just the red color so i'm going to bring this down i'm going to bring this down and at some point you want to sort of pick an avenue that you've made as the channel because ultimately just as an example we're going to sort of bring that down here through the land and round back on itself like this so you're going to end up with this lovely sort of uh, river of the lava coming down so try to sort of plan that as part of your your journey so maybe i will start to maybe bring this one down here a little bit more and as i go i can create these lovely little sub channels that maybe don't quite turn into the rivers as much but they you know the lava does really flow and this brush by the way fantastic brush lots and lots of color in here lots of sort of uh, possibilities as well because of its pressure sensitivity and how it really escalates through those fiery fiery colors now what i would say is once you get to a point like this just move on to the next sort of space because you can always come back you don't want to overdo one area too intensely so maybe here where i've got this lovely little lump here that sort of uh, sticks out i'll maybe just sort of bring that into play let that lava just maybe run around the other side there and the lava itself is going to come out of the top sort of quite uh, full side to side but i'm going to kind of sort of channel it a little bit more towards that left side so i will sort of create like a little running line down here you can look for the textures in the actual volcano sort of rocky surface that we made so here i can see a little bit of a line I could maybe sort of bring in like a little bit of the, the red tones and then I can see there is really a straight line here so I could probably follow that but I'm going to leave that side a little bit again more sparing so I can create that river lake of a uh, river lake the lava lake coming down there so I'm really trying to sort of just adjust my pen angle to brighten up some of these points in the right fashion I don't want it to be too wide on certain occasions brighten that up right now we've done a large amount there let's try and then focus on the top again so let's go to 45 percent here and we're gonna just sort of wiggle your pen wiggle your pen and create some really big bursts so we want to create like a really big sort of burst up here at the top and I'm, again i'm gonna kind of lean that off to the left a bit more and as they sort of make their way up towards the cloud you can 
let those lines become like red almost. So like just really light amount of pressure. So you've got this big fiery area here and you know angle the lines out accordingly. But over here on the left, you can see as they get towards the top, just up towards those uh, clouds, I'm just letting that that sort of red take over, not be too, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not too uh, bright up there really, to be honest, not too illuminated. Just let that red take over as the warmth. So we've got these kind of spiky lines out, but if we drop then the brush down to say 4%, we can get in here now and start to just add in like little sort of flicks where the lava is just like, of course, erupting up and out of here. And these small little details, I think look fantastic. You can just create like flying little bits in the air and try not to do too many. And also like try to vary up the sizes, you know, press quite firm in some areas here and there, like there, and maybe even like one all the way up there potentially, and one up there too. In fact, that one might be a little bit too far. Let's probably just create one or two up here. We can also continue that in here as well. So with that smaller brush now, you can really start to sort of create mini details in here. So lots of tiny little bumps and lumps of just bright areas in here, just little areas catching on rocks maybe, or little something like that, you know, getting stuck behind a rock of sort. Lovely little bright spots in here. Let's then continue up flicking these little sort of areas like this. And you can also create like little ones down here as well where, um, you know, some way or somehow it's just flicking up and off of the surface. Down into here, you can maybe create like the odd little patch here and there on top of like a little bit of texture that you can see just to add in those extra little touches, fire up these areas as well. And I'm gonna now start to try and focus a little bit more attention into this line here, because again, I want that to be kind of my main focal point that then wraps around. I'm gonna go down here, gonna really brighten this edge up over here, let that run round. And honestly, I would spend as much time as you can in this area, if you can, just you know, really putting in lots of little sort of dashes and lots of little tiny little details that you can afford to give with your time. Lots and lots of them up into the air here. Lots and lots of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm probably gonna just quickly switch to a 45% and just try and increase the red a little bit more up into those clouds. So just very light with my pressure. I don't want them to be thin lines. I want the brush to be on its side a little bit. So I'm just gonna push up even more of the red. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and create another new layer and I'm going to create the lava lake so I can adjust it freely if I want to or even turn it off if you don't fancy it quite as much as your volcano itself. So for example I'm going to follow in fact this line here. I'm going to follow this one and I'm just going to sort of, sort of plan out a little sort of avenue and then let that sort of really get quite wide down here. So I'm going to create a much larger area down here and just try to sort of make that look a little bit sort of natural and just blend this all the way down. So you can get a little bit brave with the color at this point and also with the size of it, you know, really let this sort of fan out down here at the bottom. Like it's really coming towards you, it's getting really large and you can just fan that out down here. And then what we need to do is we just need to make sure if we go back to like a small brush size, we can really, really pack out the color in here. So like really make sure that that's nice and bright. That is the main area where all of it's just running out and down and creating this lovely little sort of uh, lava river down here. And from there, you can maybe create the odd sort of little tiny scrape off here and there. Again, you can also go back in with that small brush size and maybe create like little, little flicks and dashes, especially in it as well, you know, create lots and lots of little scuffs and little areas that you can see or want to add in a little something like this. I'm gonna sort of bulk out the edge a little bit more as well, make that nice and white. So that lava's coming in, it's hitting some sort of like, sort of groove in the ground as such. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna make my brush size about 20% and create some bigger, larger flicks out from the top. Nothing too symmetrical or sort of very identifiable. I want it to be nice and sort of like spitting out just random little tiny spots, but also then these larger ones as well. 
And again, you can spend as long as you like on this. You can see I've just dropped back to the 40% now and I'm just creating some other sort of red avenues, keeping it super, super light with my pressure, just so I can, I can have some fun and carve out this world that we're looking at, carve out sort of little runs here and there down the hill. Now the final step to do after this is once you're happy with all your lava, you can go ahead and go to your layers, create two new layers here, and we can go ahead and grab both of those and we're gonna drag them all the way to the top of our layers, right at the very top. They're gonna to be kind of final lighting layers. So I've collapsed my lava down for our uh, volcano. The bottom layer out of the two, we're gonna go ahead and change the blend mode from normal to overlay. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab the yellow at the bottom of that first column. Your brush wants to be set to the option of airbrushing and the soft brush. I'm gonna make it nice and large, probably around about sort of 45 to 50%, if not slightly larger than that. Let's go up to that sort of 50% mark. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna tap on the center area of the volcano here, just maybe once or twice. What we're trying to aim for is just to make the sort of atmosphere a little bit more yellow, a little bit warmer. What we're then gonna do is create a, well, with that new layer here, we're gonna go ahead and change the blend mode, should I say, to screen. Change the color to the red in the middle of that first column. Bring the brush size down to around about sort of 30%. And again, on that center point where our sort of volcano is, just tap a few times just to warm that up. And you can even sort of warm up the, the uh, cloud here at the top by just bringing a little bit of red upwards. They're a little bit optional and you can just sort of mess around with that to your heart's content. And as I said, you can then go back into your lava group and spend as much time as you want. Now, what I would recommend is when you get back into here and you've got the red and you change your brush back to the option of elements and the flames brush, is you kind of want to make sure that when you've got a sort of 20% brush size, that there is a little bit of a, a white core to this top area here. So just out the top of your mountain, try and sort of really press quite firm and add in a few areas of really, really bright white in there. So that is the brightest part. And then you can see it all just making its way down. Again, I really would advise you just spend as long as you can adding in dash after dash after dash until you're happy. And I've turned off my drawing guide. I'm going to go ahead and pinch with two fingers. I'm going to go full screen with four and we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, please be sure to share your designs with me over on Instagram. Please make sure to tag me in them so I actually get to see them. Otherwise, they get lost in my feed, unfortunately. And otherwise, you can share your finished creations in my Discord. Both will be linked in the description down below. If you want weekly tutorials from me, hit the subscribe button. And if you want even more tutorials from me, I post three more every single month to a catalogue of over 80 at the time of recording to my Patreon supporters. There's a link in the description down below. You get access to that catalogue of all the exclusive tutorials, have your name featured in videos, sneak peeks, early access and much, much more. So hit the link in the description down below and come and show your support. And if you like this video here on YouTube, you'll probably like this one on the screen now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.